As some of you are likely aware, I've kicked off a series recently where I test VHF, UHF antennas out in the field. Largely, that's been made possible from my VHF, UHF antenna that's on my roof and the absolute workhorse that is the RSP-1A by SDR Play. I use this in VHF, uh, two meter ham radio bands, to receive a predefined frequency and I capture the received signal strength, plus I also record the audio that's coming into this on my computer. That allows me to get a transmit test out of the antenna when I'm out in the field, about two miles from my home. Well, I, I've always had a problem with that testing methodology because I was only testing two meter or I could flip it over to 70 centimeter and do the whole test again. That's not really conducive for time. So I was kind of bummed out. Also, I have uh, been hogging my two meter, 70 centimeter antenna, which is normally connected to my ICOM 2730 here on the bench where I could then talk to people on simplex and whatnot. So I went ahead and I made a purchase. I picked up the RSP Duo. This is a dual tuner as they call it, SDR receiver, which will allow me to receive two independent frequencies at any one time. Great, so there's step one. We can now receive both two meter and 70 centimeter for any antennas I wanna take into the field. Great start. And the problem remains, I don't have a good antenna <clears throat> up to free up my normal two meter and 70 centimeter antenna. And so that's where this disc cone comes into play. This disc cone can receive from 25 megahertz all the way up to 5,000 megahertz. That gives you extremely wide banded capability that I am going to use both for my testing of antennas on video, but to also connect to my scanner that I have in my shack here. Let's go ahead and get started on this build and then hopefully get it on the roof so I can play radio and do an antenna test this weekend. Okay, so this kit comes pretty standard. It comes in a plastic diamond bag, like you've probably seen for mobile antennas and whatnot. Basically, it is a center mast that is screwed into a hub piece. This hub piece, you're going to attach vertical legs and horizontal spikes. It's just spiky bits all over, which it's, it's kind of a cool antenna when it's all built. It comes with uh, two U-bolts and a mounting bracket, which uh, you're going to use or I will use to mount onto a mast I have in the backyard, and a set of hardware with a small Allen key. Again, something that you'll use when you're attaching the set pieces. The mainstay of a discone antenna like this are these long rods. There are two sets. There's the type that come out at a diagonal, and then there's the type that run horizontal out of the, I don't know, it's kind of like a crown or a corona type of uh, look to it. Discone antennas are extremely wide banded antennas. That's why they're so uh, preferential for things like scanning or software defined radio listening, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing, both things. So I figured, why not? The short ones here at the top, they have threaded, they're already threaded, so they just go into the side and thread into the horizontal base or perpendicular to the hub. However, the long guys, these ones, these go in and then are set screwed in place. They come in and are slightly keyed, and then you use a set screw, the hex set screw, to lock them in. So I think the best way to go about this is to probably go ahead and do the diagonal pieces first and then go from there. So you go like that. Right, they slide in place. Lay this guy down. Let me get out my little set screws. First set screw, I'm gonna apply this on the end of my Allen key. Make sure they're in there good. Okay, let's find a flat spot. There's the flat spot. Okay, they don't go in very far. So make sure you're paying attention to that when you're screwing these in. They're, uh, they're gonna sit a little proud for what it looks like. Also amongst, yeah, there it is. Amongst the long pieces, there is a uh, flexible whip and that actually goes out the top here, which gets you loading up through six meg, um, 50 megahertz, so six meter band. I believe that's what this is set for. Let's get all these diagonal pieces mounted and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and get back with you. Okay, if you're following along at home, you now have a, a spiky Christmas tree. These little 
diagonal pieces that come off to it. You can kind of set it on a table while you're working. Uh, it does sit fairly wide though, so you're gonna need a table that's wide enough to support it. Now these uh, smaller pieces, they thread right here. They're th they've got threads and the other end is tapped. And then you just go in with those like that. Now I will mention while I'm doing this that this feed connection is a type N connector. Type N connectors are different from the ones you may be used to if you've mainly only been working in the VHF, UHF space. As you go higher in frequency, the connector of choice is generally the type N connector as it can handle higher megahertz with less loss. And that loss is what we're really trying to avoid, particularly on transmit, but um, it's uh, good to have anyway. Type N connectors are more expensive, somewhat harder to crimp and solder, not that much though, I wouldn't worry about it. And you can buy coax with type N connectors already on them, so you should not have any issue being able to make this work. Um, do watch out though, because this thing's literally poking right at my face, and so I'm trying not to... Uh, Try not to blind myself right now. It would have been nice if this kit had little uh, rubber end caps like the the little diagonal pieces do, but it does not. Ooh, see, now it's coming at me. It headed right for me. All right, here we go. Three more, three more. And there you go. So that's pretty much that. Okay, now there is a, as I mentioned, a vertical whip here and a loading coil. That's this black piece. Now, how you would tune this Come on, buddy. There you go. I have a feeling this won't work um, here in the shack, but I'm willing to try. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get this placed. I'm not going for anything complicated. And inevitably, even if I do tune it down here on the ground with everything around us, the metal, the lights, all that stuff, it's likely going to throw off what we think the tune is or what the, um, the meter is going to show us. There's not a whole lot of adjustment either. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and find the midpoint, lock this down, and let me take a reading here. But before I do that, I have to mount the coax, so let me get a screwdriver. All right, there are set screws all over the outside of this. And unfortunately, one of the set screws, once you get this fully assembled, is partially blocked. So you may need to get um, a smaller diameter screwdriver to get in there, at least to get this one out. And, Jesus, it is, <laughs> they don't have many threads on them, so be careful. They use serrated washers, don't lose the serrated washers. That would be a very big pain if you did that. In hindsight, there's nothing really wrong with um, leaving the, the pole off of the hub while you assemble it. That's probably a better option because now it's blocked. Is that right? Is this one blocked? Oh man. Okay, so you do have to remove one of the spokes. So keep that in mind. You may want to attach coax, <laughs> attach coax first, then um, put the mast back on, then install the diagonals as I now had to remove that piece. And now I've got access to the screw. <laughs> okay, I got it. And there you go, the mast comes off. Now, I feel like I'm gonna poke myself in the eye. These things actually do kind of scare me a little bit uh, for the, the safety aspect of getting stabbed in the eye. That's, that's no joke, so really do be careful. Again, these don't have coverings on them. I really wish they'd add those. Okay, so here's 50 foot of LMR400 type and coax. LMR400 is the basically the specs on the gauge of the center connector. This, in, this one is stranded, I believe. The inner dielectric that goes between the center connector and then the shield, and then the outer jacket. So I've got a decent length of it right here that I pulled off. I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna feed the mast, you know what? No, I'm gonna feed the mast through, that's right. Still gotta do that, gotta do that no matter what. Otherwise I'm gonna be um, real upset with myself when I have to unroll 50 feet of coax to slide up a mast support. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna match up the antenna here. All right, come on, come on. This, this might bite me in the butt, we'll find out here shortly. I'm gonna get a good connection, really tight, real tight, maybe, ooh. Got a cramp. 
May even want to get some channel locks and tighten those up. But I'm going to get some coax wrap, and I'm going to wrap that right now, and then shoot up that uh, that mast. Coax wrap is self amalgamating tape, and whichever one I have more of looks like black is the one I'm going to use. You take about eh, six inches or so, roughly, and you're going to go in the direction that the connector gets tight. So when you're hand tightening it, you know, going like that, um, you're going to pull the tape on like that way. This is gonna be a little tricky. Hindsight being 2020, now that I'm thinking about how you should do this, because I'm literally doing this for the first time and recording it. You should take the hub, right? Disconnect the mass piece, attach the coax, add your coax wrap, put the mass piece on, finish the assembly. That's what I would have done. Because now I've got to figure out how I'm gonna get my hands in between the little diagonal bits while also still getting in there and, and tightening the uh, connector. So I'm going to try and feed it in here because you got to go above the connector with the self amalgamating tape just a bit. And this isn't going to give us a lot to work with. This is probably a, a lost cause actually. I don't even know why I'm doing this now that I'm looking at it in here. Um, I'm going to pull it tight and that's not going to work either. I've got to bring it all the way around. Hmm. I'm still going to do it, but uh, this is probably wasted effort. Try to get it as high up onto our connector without covering those pilot holes for the um, the mast piece as possible. And I'm going to pull really tight. Come on. Get it up over the connector. Come on. <sighs> okay. Now, once I've made a, a lap where a, one piece of the tape is touching the other piece of the tape, this is, gets extreme, uh, much, much easier. It was that first bit that I was I was really worried about. Now your next bit, your goal here is to go all the way around the connector, like get it all the way below the connector so you make a good watertight seal. That's what you're aiming for here. Now this mast section is going to help, but it's not going to do you any favors as far as waterproofing goes because there are no O-rings or weather seal or anything like that. Okay, so that part's done. Now I can take my mast, slide it back up. It clears the coax seal. Great job there. Let's get our screws back in. Nicely done, everybody. Oh! <laughs> that could have gone, couldn't have gone worse if I planned it, although I did find the pieces in, in relatively short order. <laughs> Not a problem. Jeez, what a mess. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> This screwdriver is not big enough. Uh, in fact, now that I've got that out of the way, it's the wrong size screwdriver, which is part of my problem. Much better connection. Uh, all right. Okay. Yes, there you go. There you go. Come on. You little jerk. Get in there. <laughs> What's happening? There it is. <laughs> bite those threads, bud. Come on. Come on, do your job. Get in there, do some work. All right, let's <laughs> rotate this. Now I got this vertical whip that I'm contending with. I've got the diagonal pieces and I've got these guys just angrily hunting for my eyeballs. Let's get this thing put together and check it out on an analyzer. Again, I don't expect much on the ground here, but you know, why not? We're here. That's an antenna. There she is. Okay, now let's, again with the whip, slide this guy over so I can get access to the feed line. I'm going to leave this coiled up, but I'm going to pull out one coil here. I frankly don't want to have this un unwrapping on me while I'm trying to do this uh, getting up on the roof with this whole contraption. This seems like a mess. Doing what this should be doing. This is a type N connector that is on the Rig Expert Pro. By, um, by its very nature, when you purchase it, it comes with an adapter to get you to SO239. So we're going straight in the way it should be. I don't think I'm going to get lucky enough to just hit multi and have ham radio show up here. So let me back up a step. It's probably not going to like any of this. It's 2.85 to 1 on 6 meters. Nope, that's not what I wanted. And it's on the high side. Uh, it's on the... So it's too long? Interesting. Okay. Hmm. It's 1.04 to 1 on 2 meters. Fantastic. It's 1.55 to 1 on 1.2 meters. And it's 1.4 to 1 on 70 uh, centimeters. In fact, that's a nice little pattern there, actually, on that one. Let me see if I... Where does it get 10? 10, it doesn't even. 
Can't even try for 10. This is just not long enough and that loading coil isn't too big. Um, I'm gonna, what do I wanna do? I think I'm gonna adjust this down slightly. But see again, um, and now we're we're kind of getting outside of the, the doing video and into a bit of theory. Not theory so much as just mucking around with antennas. Inevitably, because of everything going on around me, it's not giving a good environment to do a good antenna tune-up on this. Further, when I get it where I want it to be, or ultimately where I would love to have it, it's going to be out of my reach. I'm not going to be able to, to adjust it. In your best scenario, if you were going to set up something like this, you'd be better off if you set up a tripod in a yard, have big grass, large space that you could get far back from it, take a measurement with an antenna analyzer, and then go adjust the whip. In this case, I'm going to drop this down a little bit because it seems like it's a little too long, at least from in here. It's possible that when I make this adjustment, it's now going to screw that whole thing up when I get it up on the roof. That's kind of the game you play. A little bit of a gamble. I have a feeling that no matter how much I adjust this, because it's still 1.6 to 1. In fact, it's, I think it got worse. I don't think there's anything I can do with everything here. I'm just going to have to put it up and, uh, and see how we do. By the way, again, just a reminder, I don't care that this transmits. The fact that it transmits is, is gravy to me. This is supposed to be for receiving. This is going to be a scanner antenna. This is an SDR antenna. So I'm not that worried uh, about any issues I have with it getting, you know, uh, not great transmission. As long as it hears, good ears is all I'm looking for here. Well, there's nothing doing but putting this up on the roof now. I think it's uh, ready to take a little bit of a climb. Well, we're uh, transitioning to roof shot. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. Make sure you click subscribe and click that bell so you know when I go live. Yeah, let's hope I get through this. And also I got something cool to show you while I'm up there for all of you that end up on a roof um, every so often and you want to be a little bit safer. I'm like some kind of crazy Mary Poppins with this thing. Holy smokes. So I can't completely help the sun situation here, but I wanted to show this while, uh, while we're playing around with this. This is called the Pitch Hopper. And you can see it's got two angled sides. The foam face goes on the roof. And once it's on there, you can't, you can't slide off of it. And it's a really good platform to stand on. My mom got me this because she's always worried that I'm on the roof too much, which she's probably right to be worried. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay, so the only, th the only thing I think we can do here is just drastically lower our Arden mesh, which is a bummer, but you know, hey, whatever. Good. Okay. Heck yeah. I'm pretty proud of that. All right, here's what we ended up with. Looks pretty good. I can't wait to see how it performs. Let's go run an antenna test and uh, get it on a receiver. I don't know how much of a difference we're gonna get out of this, but um, this is my SDS 200. Right now it's using an internal antenna, really not a good antenna. I can basically hear East Los Angeles dispatch and the Cerritos dispatch where I live, which is no surprise. And it just scans and scans and scans and it can't hear much of anything else. So let's, uh, let's swap it over and uh, let's do a little comparison and see how much, uh, how much better it sounds. And by better it sounds, I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna pull out more signals. That's the point, right? Right. Okay, here we go. Hey sir, K9 is code 4 in uh, La Parada, 21, 1 bite, and we're also in route to East LA. Big signal right. report there. 
Receive signal. I don't usually hear these folks. I'm in on West Valley. That correction, West Valley frequency for a missing adult. Sherman Way Ooh. between Valjean and Havenhurst. That is loud. 21 is en route to 12883 Glass Avenue. Santa Monica is Starbucks. Yeah. So that was Santa Monica, or they're calling out Santa Monica, so that's LA City Police. That's far from me. That's not close. 133, Tom was 97 on Belmont, 927 So we're now scanning that ATAC. There we go. We heard they went to ATAC. We were just working dispatch earlier, so now we should hear ATAC in addition to the dispatch. ATAC is what they moved off to. I guess there's like a party going on or something like that. So, you know, they had to call out the, uh, <laughs> call out the helicopter. All right, well, you get the idea. It's working better than before from my non-scientific uh, approach, but I like it. Works for me. <laughs> let's uh, let's put it on the, uh, the SDR play and see how we do. All right, so good news, great news. The Disco Nintendo works fantastically. I'm using SDR Uno, which is the software, free software that comes with, or you download it and run it with your SDR Play. This is two meters, just my local area. I don't know what's going on right here. Maybe, uh, yeah, it's APRS. Jumping around a little bit. Looks like something. Uh, is this Terry out there? Don't you hear this conversation on the floor, man? Get it. It was that you have to go in and manually change the baud rate if you switch between you. And the call is Kilowatt Romeo 3 Golf, KR3G. Looks like they're doing a bit of a... Alright, KR3G. Got it right that time. Uh, this is 220. Could be a better day, it's uh, been raining all day. Here in Pretty good. South Central Pennsylvania, and so I figured I'd uh, <clears throat> retire to the uh, radio room. What, do you, what say you? Okay. Not bad. Wow, it's a little quiet on 70 centimeters. Look at that. that I've never seen 70 centimeters. Oh, uh, yeah, never mind. That's in part here. Let me hop up here. Boop. Watch this. 446000. Zero, zero, zero. There's everybody. Look at this. Somebody's doing some shenanigans on the bands. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2321 with a release date of Friday, April 22nd, 2022, to follow in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following is a QST. So this is one of those no-brainer things that I'm, I'm really glad that I ended up getting. Anyway, so far so good. Win for me. As some of you, <coughs> geez, 